Hey everybody, how's it going? Injury here. Have you ever tried to make a video on Hearts of Iron 4 about some of your favorite dead mods, only to have it become your most successful video ever? Yeah, me too. So, uh, in this one, I'll be doing the exact same thing as the last one, because, as you're all aware, my creative genius is absolutely unmatched. Nevertheless, I want to send a big thanks to all of you who watched my last video, which is by far the most successful thing I've ever made, and a special thanks to everybody that left really nice comments for me on my last video. And of course, a special thanks to everybody that helped us push this channel to over 1,400 subscribers in May alone. Thank you all so much. So just for the sake of clarity here, this is going to be a mix of some of the great mods that you all recommended in the comments section of the previous video. And after me playing through a whole bunch of them, I'm ready to show off the ones I thought was especially intriguing. And quite frankly, some of the ones I wish I had played a little sooner. As always, I need to point out that while these mods are dead and long abandoned by their owners, you can always roll your game back to play some of these fantastic legacy mods for yourself. Have you ever wanted to play a mix between Europa Universalis and Crusader Kings 2 in Hearts of Iron 4, but you're just too stupid to figure out how? Well, then maybe Old Europe 1300 could be just the thing you're looking for. Old Europe 1300 is a mod where you play as any country in Europe in the 1300s, which is neatly placed between Crusader Kings 2 and EU4, which starts in 769 and 1444 respectively. Old Europe 1300 has some really interesting system that really gives it that EU4 vibe, where rebels can spawn even if you control the descent of your country, and keeping your army standing does actually impact your finances, and there's an upkeep every single month that you have to pay, which is completely detached from literally every single other Hearts of Iron mod I've ever played, not to mention the core game, which I thought was really, really cool. Nevertheless, Old Europe 1300 was last updated in February of 2021 and gets the definite abandoned stamp, much to the displeasure of everybody that wanted it, and there was quite a few guys that seemed to really enjoy this one. Out of all the mods you guys wanted to see, the Chinese Warlord mod might be the most mentioned out of every single mod in the comment section of the last video. The Warlord mod places the world back to the wonderful year of 1919 in the aftermath of the Chinese Revolution of 1911, where the player can choose one of several Chinese Warlord Republics to play as and battle it out against the other Chinese cliques. The mod has a unique loading screen, some pretty music, new layouts, as well as being very well optimized since the only playable countries are in the extended China region. The mod has also condensed the research tree down to only two tabs, which is a totally different idea than what a lot of other total conversion mods do, and I actually really, really enjoy it. It's a simplified Hearts of Iron experience with its focus on combat, and it's actually quite refreshing in regards to the simplicity. It doesn't try to do too much, instead it just focuses on streamlining the experience, which to my great surprise I actually really enjoy. You all know, I'm the type of person that enjoy black ice and all of its stupid complexity, but I actually enjoy the oversimplicity somehow of the Chinese Warlord mod. It's just a no bullshit, quick to action mod. Honestly, if you haven't tried this one yet, this is your sign to do so. The Warlord era mod is very upfront about being out of date, and it even states it in the game. A message appears when a player starts a new game, reading, quote, The Warlord era is dead and will not receive any more updates. Moving on. Next up, we have Enzeek. Enzeek is an absolute unit of a mod, letting you start playing in 1910 and letting you play all the way through the Enzeek in 1945, making it a pretty ambitious mod in terms of the amount of years it covers and letting you actually play through it all as a single nation, start to finish, if the RNG and your skill is on your side. Having the ability to play for a single nation for that long and letting you change it into the type of country that you want to have is a pretty neat experience in Hearts of Iron 4. Nevertheless, it is important to keep in mind that Enzig really isn't one of those totally crazy total conversion mods that adds a ton of new lore and units and graphics and buttons and other fancy stuff. This is more the type of mod that adds more content on top of the pre-existing package that Hearts of Iron 4 really is with cool new start dates ranging from 1910, 35, 40, and all the years between 1940 and 45, not to mention, of course, new focus trees and lots of other revamps. The type of longevity that NZ gives you is perhaps its most unique trait, letting you play through some of the most important historical events in our time. Watch this happen. Look at this. Oh, 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 oh what the fuck happened? Woo, look at that. 
And there are of course new focus trees for the major countries and other new content. But again, keep in mind NZIG isn't focused on changing everything into something new and cool. All in all, NZIG might not be the most crazy total conversion mod with cool new buttons and lights, but it adds lots of high quality content that's undoubtedly worth trying. So I understand why so many of you wanted to see it, even if it's not my personal top 10 mods. Godspeed. Godspeed is a mod that is a little bit hard to really explain, but can be characterized primarily by its amazing and deep lore, quite similar to that of the New World Order, The Last Days of Europe, which I covered in my previous video. This isn't the kind of mod that is super combat focused like the Chinese World Order mod, rather Godspeed focuses quite a fair bit of its content on storytelling, and it does so very, very well. If you're not really into storytelling and lore, you might not really enjoy Godspeed, as there is some spacing between combat, but if you enjoy an amazing story, you'll absolutely love all the insane lore in Godspeed. From the depressed Tsar of Russia, to the never-ending winter encompassing the entire planet, to a starving and split Italy, to so much more lore that is worth to be seen, heard, and read, Godspeed is a mod you'll really, really remember. A cool thing about this mod is that while some of the lore and the elements of the world that, it, that we see in the game co-aligns with our own, most of the lore and Godspeed divert wildly from our own, as you'll be able to see on the map. The focus trees in this one are unlocked based on decisions you make, and they're quite small, meaning you'll never really know what the decisions you do will impact later, and how it will impact the lore. There is some interesting technology in this mod, but for the most part it's pretty standard. The laws, however, are different. Either way, I'm not really doing a great job here of explaining to you what Godspeed really is. So instead of beating around the bush, let me actually tell you the story of my very first playthrough as Italy, just to prove to you how nuts this mod really is. Now, for my second ever playthrough, I decided to do a game as Italy. Simple enough. Now, Italy isn't doing so good in 1934 Godspeed lore. They've been invaded in the south and is now a split nation. And the French are in the north doing nothing, and you're in a faction with them. One of the first things that happen as Italy is that the Italian king reaches out to France for help because starvation is bad. The French, being French, decline to share their food with the Italians and tell us instead to eat cake. The Italians tell the French to take their faction and shove it up their ass. Literally, this, this all happens within the first five minutes of playing. The Italian king, having just left a major faction, returns home to try and stabilize his country. I tried appealing to the conservatives, not realizing the socialists were a little bit angry, but making the right decisions, I could have coaxed them to my side. As stability in my country plummishes, skirmishes between the royalists, socialists, and the radical legion nationalists erupt across Milano, the capital city of Italy. And on one dark particular night, the royal palace is attacked. The royal guards slaughtered down by the oncoming wave of legion separatists. The royal king is dragged from his palace and beheaded in the central square of Milano, power of Italy falling to the legionists. Literally within the first 15 minutes of gameplay. I shit you not. Keep in mind this is the result of my fantastic decision making. I wasn't even trying to make this happen. And eventually you get to do some uh, rather horrifying shit and taking care of the problem in the south. And that's when I realized the filthy Germans were controlling rightful Italian territory of Venezia, so I decided to remove them altogether, issuing in a new age of Italian glory, expanding east to help my Russian neighbors with their troubles. I could keep going, but I won't spoil any more lore. Experience it for yourself. As always, the links to these mods are down below. Alright, so far in this video, I've talked about a bunch of different mods I think are really noteworthy and are a great experience overall, but I also have a few mods that I think are worth mentioning in the video without necessarily deep diving into. I actually went through and scoured the entire comment section of the last video and took every single mod that I saw you guys mention into a separate list and played through a whole bunch of them. And so I quickly wanted to mention some of the mods I didn't think necessarily was worth really diving deep into, but I actually wanted to mention in the video anyway. And the first one of these mods I quickly want to talk about is Red Dawn. Red Dawn is a mod inspired by the 1984 movie with the same name, where the United States and NATO is weakened and Soviet forces launch a full-scale invasion on the United States. Now this mod straight off is extremely outdated. The last update was in 2019. A lot of the major countries didn't have focus trees or the ones that were particularly interesting in my opinion at least didn't have them. 
And this unfortunately runs even poorly when rolled back to version 161, which it was originally made for. Either way, I thought it was a really cool concept and wanted to mention it in the video. Speaking of communist alternative world mods, Red Alert 3 was also mentioned a bunch by you guys. And this is of course a mod that tries to recreate some of the magic from the Red Alert universe put into Hearts of Iron. Uh, this mod seems rather unfinished, but the concept is really, really cool, as I am, of course, a big fan of the Red Alert universe. Other honorable mentions include Man in the High Castle, which a lot of you guys mentioned, but I didn't include it in my other video because I personally see uh, it as the predecessor to the New Order Last Days of Europe, and I really didn't think it was worth going into how it's its predecessor and all those kinds of things. Now, some of you guys also mentioned a mod called Autumn Begonia, probably ruining the pronunciation of that, uh, a Warlord era mod, which is supposedly the actual successor to the Chinese Warlord era mod that we talked about before. The Chinese Warlord era Steam Workshop page actually mentions this as well, but I cannot find a listing for it on the workshop page. The Discord link on uh, the workshop page is invalid, but if it turns out to be the successor of the Warlord era mod, then I do have high hopes for it. Another really honorable mention I want to talk about that was mentioned by you guys and that I played is Southern Victory. Southern Victory is a mod where, of course, the southern states are victorious in the U.S. Civil War, and there is a new war brewing between the North and South states, now two separate countries, in 1936. Now, this mod is definitely one of a kind and is actually based on the Southern Victory novel book series by Harry Turtledove. This is an actual total conversion mod, but I didn't really think it was worth going into in great depth as the only countries that have focus trees are pretty much the United States with a few others tacked on. Some of you guys also really wanted to see a mod called Nerves of Steel, which seems like such an interesting and appealing concept. I just unfortunately could not get it to work. It kept crashing every single time. And of course, who could forget the Breaking Bad mod? This mod is an absolute meme, making New Mexico an independent country where Walter White leads the neutral faction, Hank leads the fascist one, Gus leads the communist one, and Jesse leads the democratic one. Now finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about Palpatine's Gamble, which is the Star Wars mod that I covered in my last video. Uh, I mentioned how this is an outdated and dead mod, and it absolutely is, but a lot of you guys pointed out that there is actually a successor mod called Project Valakord, which is totally legitimate, but it's in a different Star Wars era and is therefore a little bit less interesting to me, so I neglected to include it in the previous video, but if you guys would like to see the successor mod, you should definitely check out Project Valakord. With that being said though, I really really appreciate you all watching and I hope you enjoyed this final show of great outdated mods that you all showed to me in the comment section of the last video. So what would you guys like to see me cover next? Is there any particular Hearts of Iron topics you'd like me to cover or any other feedback whatsoever? I'd really like to hear it in the comment section down below. I'd also love to invite you guys to my Discord where I hang out and post things most days of the week, playing a variety of games both on and off stream. You can also find a list of all the mods you guys mentioned in the Discord. Links is down below. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and bye bye.